Can we just have a look? What is he doing in the very first line from the question itself to his first line of work? And it reads 3 and 5 tenths minus 7 and 6 tenths. Someone hand up. What has he done? Yeah, Delage. He's done the common denominator. Okay, so he's seen, look, see these guys here? Uh, over 2 and over 5. They're not going to talk to each other in their present form. So he's converted the denominators by multiplying, in this case, by 5 over 5. What's he multiplied this time? Over here. That's 2 over 2, right? Do you agree with his conversion? Has he converted correctly? Yeah. Yes. So far, so good. Before we move on, is there anything else you could have done apart from that? I'm not saying it's wrong, but did anyone do something different? Right. Um, take away the front number. What do you mean by take away the front number? Okay, so you could have done 3 take away 7, which would give you negative 4. And then you're like, well, I've dealt with the whole numbers now. Now I'll deal with the fractions. Is there anyone who did something different again, Ellen? Um, I just made it a mixed unit from the beginning. Hold on, so oh, what was your... Yeah, okay, so maybe you wrote... Did you write 7 over 2? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Minus, what would this be? 38. 38 on 5. Okay. So if you have a look at these two approaches, both of them are fine. There's no issue with either of them. But I just want to point out, you can do this both ways. And in fact, if you have a look at this line, can you see you're going to then do what Arib did the first time, right? Get a common denominator. Do you see 7 over 2 is the same as 35 over 10? Do you recognize it? You see? They've just done the steps in a slightly different order, but you'll arrive at the same spot as so long as your numbers are right. Right, finally, he's gone 35 take away 76 equals negative 41 on 10. What do you think? You're happy with that? Yeah. Um, if you had converted it to a mixed numeral, right, I guess that would be minus, well, what was it? Minus 4, negative 4, and 1 on 10. One on ten. Either of which are fine. The question did not ask you to put it in one form or another, so either of those should get a big tip. Good job. Okay. Now, let's have a look. Here's a rationalized denominator, 8 root 2 on 3. Can I get a show of hands who agrees? Yes? Fantastic, thank you, hands down. Now, this is great. However, we'll point out, you notice how Brian had to do a little bit of extra legwork to get there. Particularly, this number is very large. Now, it's not wrong, it's just a bit of a longer way to do it. Can someone tell me what was it that maybe he could have done differently to make it a little bit simpler? Yeah, Arif. Instead of putting uh, times 3 root over uh, 3, Root two, uh, root two, yeah. Root two. Yeah. Okay. So see this guy here and this guy here. They're not wrong. He's got it on the top and bottom, so everything will be fine. It will be accurate, but it's not necessary, right? If we're trying to rationalize, then the issue is the irrational part down there, which is just the root two. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is why multiplying by root two and root two. If you did that directly, this would become sixteen root two on. Six, and then you still get the same answer at the end. But you just deal with smaller numbers, which is kind of nice up and hurts my brain less, okay? Right, now, number three. This is weird because usually you have to do this in reverse, don't you? You get given an equation, and then I ask you to work on it and work on it until you get this as your last line. So I've asked you to kind of do it in reverse. Has anyone got an equation, just one? Anyone want to shout one out? Yeah, go ahead. Um, minus the... It's a mixed numeral. Yeah, that's um, okay. Minus what? Uh, 3 and fi uh, 5 over 8. Yep. Equals 2. Equals 2 minus 1. Um, 6 over 8. Hold on. Minus 1. I know. What? Minus 1. Um, yeah, 6. And then the... It's a mixed numeral again. Six okay, and eight. 6 over 8. Yeah. yeah um, plus x. <laughs> okay. What? Yeah, I think it works out too. Okay, so if you have a look, if you have a look, what's what's Cushy actually done? There's a straight line. I don't know if you looked at this question, you're like, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Which, by the way, makes it a, the best kind of question. Because those questions where you're like, oh, I know exactly what to do here, you're somewhat on autopilot. You're almost not really thinking. You're just kind of doing what your calculator does. Whereas here, when you're like, oh, I'm not sure what direction to go in, that means you have to actually apply some thought. There's a straight line to go from this line to this line. Do you notice, if I maybe write it backwards, like this. What's the one operation that gets us from this line 
to that one. What do I do? What have I done to both sides of the equation? <laughs> what do you reckon? Right? <laughs> Say it again. Wait, hold on, sorry. So I'm comparing this line here, the one I handed to you, with this one, which is Cushy's, but she's I've just rearranged the numbers a little bit. It's the same equation. Do you see from this line here? This line here, x is on the same side, no swapping here, okay? I've just subtracted one and six eighths from both sides. Do you agree? That's what she's done from here to here. That's how I could quickly check if this was indeed this, right? So in fact, you can do anything to this line. You can multiply it by two. You could take the square root. You could um, add numbers in, or you can divide by anything you like, and you'll get something which has the same solution. For example, let's just make one up now. Can you take this with me and help me multiply everything by two? If I had two x equals, what would I get <coughs> on the right hand side? <coughs> Someone help me out. Minus three and. Okay, you've gone to a mixed, you've gone, you've gone to an improper. So here, let me just write it like this. Minus 1 and 7 eighths times 2. You see I've multiplied the left-hand side by 2 and the right-hand side by 2, so everything is still balanced. What's 7 eighths times 2? Let's just deal with that guy. 7 eighths times 2. Can you do 7 eighths times 2? That's 7 over 4, isn't it? 7 over 4? Yes? What about the 1? What happens to that guy? That's just going to become 2? That's the easy bit. So if you've got 2 and this, that's a bit weird. 2 and this, we wouldn't write a number like that. That's confusing. So can we fix up this fraction? How much is going to be a whole part that I can take out? There's going to be 4 fourths that I can take out of that. Do you agree with that? They're the same. So therefore, this is minus 3 and 3 quarters. So there's another equation that would work. In fact, there's an infinite number of equations that you could write that all have this solution. I could keep on moving around. I could move it all to the right-hand side. That would be another one. You're not used to doing this. We're going to have to bring back a question like this next time.